the land has been cursed. Any living or any dwellings that are on the sacred land are to be damned. I do hear something. Like music? It's like drum beats. I heard it was like bum, 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 bum. Built on the land of an actual massacre of a Native American tribe that used to call this place home. Thank you. It caused one of the daughters to be partly possessed, and then an exorcism had to be taken place. What's your name? Did I just say hear you? It sounded like it. Fear of the unknown is fear. You know, if you don't understand it and you don't know what's happening, then you're scared. And then that feeds it. Is this house cursed? You're right. Very, very much. This is going to be a really interesting and possibly dark investigation tonight, Dave. Tonight we're investigating the Hinsdale House. Yeah, I mean, we have heard all kinds of stories about this place throughout the years. And finally, we are standing here in the yard. Yeah, it's thought to be one of the most haunted houses, one of the most haunted structures in western New York. And the history to this goes well back before 1800. But the most prominent story from the Hinsdale house was in the 1970s when the Dandy family owned the house and experienced paranormal activity so frequent, menacing, and terrifying that they called in an exorcist to perform a structural exorcism on this house. And it's even reported that during that exorcism, there was screaming and crying coming from the windows, coming from the house itself. That is terrifying. And apparently it didn't work because the Dandy family sold the house, packed up, and left. So this is going to be a really interesting and possibly dark investigation, like I'd said. But joining us tonight because Jason and Steve couldn't make it is Miranda. Hello. Hello. She, she is a photographer, poet, paranormal enthusiast, and my better half. So uh, hopefully we can team up here tonight and try and capture some really interesting paranormal evidence that the Hinsdale house is known for. So you guys ready to go inside, see the house? Let's do it. Absolutely. Let's do it. The area that the Hinsdale house is on, it has a lot of negativity to it. This house shouldn't be here before the house was built. A smaller tribe, I believe they were called the Alegue. There was about 1,100 of them. A larger tribe came through the area and wanted what they had. So they did massacre, it was around 1,100 of them. It is to believe that the land has been cursed. Any living or any dwellings that are on the sacred land are to be damned. There was a lot of negativity, there's a lot of death, there's a lot of tragedy, and it all stems from what we believe is the curse. All right, Dave, Miranda, we're inside the Hinsdale house right now, and this is a really, really interesting location. It's not huge, but the house itself is old. Built in the 1850s, built on the land of an actual slaughter, a massacre of a Native American tribe that used to call this place home. And it's the curse that they believe they put on that land that actually leads to the hauntings and paranormal activity to this day, causing a vortex, even a possession inside the house. The stories that they've been telling us, you know, there's a lot of, they believe there's a lot of negative stuff here, you know? And I mean, there were a lot of, you know, negative things that happened and mm -hmm. they do believe that there's a portal here. I feel the curse opened up the door to many other entities, I should say, where we feel this is also UFO territory. They have seen lights. The dandies experienced the lights from the UFO over the house. 
we have elementals in the woods and a lot of our psychic mediums feel a portal or like a vortex is here and it would be in all three floors but in the living room upstairs in mary's room and in the basement there's an interesting vibe in here yeah that was the first thing i noticed whenever we walked in here was it felt like there was some sort of i mean you, you could feel the energy of the place and from what tiffany was telling us when we first got here right behind me this used to be a bedroom apparently it's now a part of the living room, but I guess this used to be a bedroom. And now they believe this to be part of the portal that runs or the vortex that runs straight up through the house. This was the bedroom of one of the daughters named Beth. And apparently Beth always would look out the windows and see a woman in white over by the pond, between yeah. the pond and the house. The vortex is believed to run straight up through here to her sister Mary's room. And Mary Dandy, is the one that they believe was actually possessed here at the Hinsdale house. Yeah, and from what she was saying, it happened right here. The exorcism did, yeah. The exorcism happened right, right around where this couch is at. This is a remote area and Clara Dandy, when moved in, she would take her dog for a walk in the woods and she said she had heard what sounded like native drumming and or like a Gregorian chanting, like the oh, like the monk sound of chanting. The dandies were affected very negatively in the end. They only lived here about 16 months uh, with four teenagers, no TV. Of course, they thought they were going to become stronger as a family, but in return, they kind of were plagued by the negative, by the negativity here and it caused one of the daughters to be partly possessed. There's many stages of possession and we believe that she was very close to the full possession. And then an exorcism had to be taken place because of that. It never did, it didn't work. Uh, but apparently right below Beth's room is over here in this corner and this is where Tiffany was telling us earlier when we first arrived at the house, that this is where the vortex goes up through the house is right here in this corner. This might be a good place to put the mel meter or a REM pod when we do abandonment. Yeah. You know, it's a good thing that, you know, the floors are, the house is not too big. We can do a camera on each floor, but it might be worth it to concentrate on the area where they believe the vortex actually was. There were murders taking place here on the stagecoach trail by two brothers that lived in the house. And when we investigate, we find information coming directly from the spirits of the brothers that they went crazy, like they're, they went mad and they didn't think their actions were unjust. And I believe that negativity causes fear Fear causes more negative actions and it just grows and grows and grows and it can affect people spiritually, it can affect them normally, paranormally. This is the bedroom area upstairs and apparently from what Tiffany had told us, the closet here is a hot spot for activity and they believe there's a young child that resides in here. I feel child energy upstairs in the closet. There was a child that was killed on a buzzsaw, which was an accident. He was playing where he shouldn't have been playing. They did have a wood mill out in the back, back then. So I feel he's a little child spirit. I feel like he gravitates toward me because I'm a mother. We get the name Henry, but we're not positive on names yet. Laura Dandy actually resided, her bedroom was right up here on the right-hand side of the stairs, but then when you came into the parents' bedroom, this was Mary's bedroom, and Mary's was the one that apparently she was possessed. Apparently for the time, for a short time after her, after she started exhibiting signs of possession, they nailed this door shut to keep her from actually experiencing any more of this oppression or possession, and moved her downstairs with Beth, but. 
Apparently they say insects flock to this room. Flies, bees used to just cover the entirety of this room. Fear of the unknown is fear. You know, if you don't understand it and you don't know what's happening, then you're scared. And then that feeds it. To me, fear feeds in to whatever negative is happening. Let's set up equipment and see if we can capture anything. The sun is going down. Let's do it. Let's set stuff up. Time for abandonment. Okay, rolling there. Uh -huh. Rolling in the basement. So we are getting ready to start our investigation of the Hinsdale house. The three of us are actually going to go up into the woods here because there is a tree that the staff has turned into what they call an offering tree. And we're going to leave an offering to the spirits. Because of the curse, we feel that we needed to give back to the land, to the natives. One of our psychic mediums went up on the hill to meditate. And then she felt she needed to do an offering to the natives and then it stuck. So now when people come visit us, they will take their own offering up and we named it the offering tree. Dave and I are both going to be giving different forms of tobacco as an offering to the spirits because tobacco was a sacred thing for the natives. And Miranda actually has a stone that she's going to be giving as an offering. What type of stone is that, Miranda? So this is a cistrine. Um, it is supposed to be a very powerful manifestation stone, and on top of that, it's also a very powerful healing stone. Um, so it's supposed to be very positive and just have a lot of like healing aspects to it. Yeah, and it's interesting too because that's what she said that they're trying to do with that offering tree is they're mm -hmm. trying to create healing from the negative energy that has plagued this land for over a century, centuries. Yeah. And I think it's kind of kind of interesting that you're giving a stone that is that symbolizes healing when they're trying to heal from that negativity themselves. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it'll yeah, hopefully they'll like it. Have a positive outcome tonight. But let's walk up there and do it. We'll do a little session once we get up here. We have a camera rolling inside the Hinsdale house right now. And hopefully while we're up here, if we happen to get any activity there, it'll correlate with something that happens in the house. So Whoa. What? <laughs> I thought I heard something over here. I heard that too. What'd you hear? Something stepping on a twig. It was, yeah, well, I'm not 100% sure, so. Okay. We're coming up on it here, I think. Okay. Here it is, the offering tree. We made it. I do hear something. Like music? It's like drum beats. Unless it is loud music. Huh. That's weird. I do hear that. Like music? It's like drum beats.
still going. I don't know how far away we are from, like, people, because I know there's that house that was just right across the field there. Yeah. But whenever we were driving up here, there wasn't many people on the road. I mean, no. practically in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It sounds modern to me, though. Doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah. The more I listen to it, the more it sounds like bass on subwoofers. That's what I'm thinking. And it's just, like, really loud. Cool. All right, so, Miranda, you're going to put the stone down now? I brought you this tobacco that is rolled in paper. I hope your tribe receives this offering as a sign of respect and I hope you come out and communicate with us tonight. This is my offering. It's just some tobacco in here. And as Ryan said, hopefully you'll accept this and come out and speak with us tonight whether it be here or down in the house on the property. Did you hear that? Uh -uh. Sounds like chanting. Listen. I don't hear it. You don't hear that? No. It sounds like drumming and chanting to me. And something just moved right down here. I can't hear the chanting anymore, but I definitely did hear it. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Very clearly. If you can bring that closer, can you? We'd love to hear your beautiful song. There's a red light right beside the tree. If you touch that, it'll light up different colors. That's there for you to let us know that you're here. Why do I hear that music so clearly? That's very interesting because I don't hear the chanting anymore, but I definitely still hear the drums. Uh huh. You don't hear that? I don't hear anything. I definitely hear that. Mm -hmm. That's music. And now I hear music. That's music. Absolutely. Who's playing music that loud, though? I don't know. They have to be over there. There's got to be a house. There's a box in my hand right here. If you walk up and try and talk into it, we might hear your voice. What's your name? Did I just say hear you? It sounded like it. What's your name? Did you Did you Did I just say hear you? It sounded like it just said hear you. Mm -hmm. It just said it again. again. What the hell? Can you hear me?
My name's Ryan. That's Miranda and Dave. Can you say one of our names? Can you speak to us so we can hear you? Did that just say my name? I, I don't know what it said, but it was a very clear man's voice. Can you speak to us so we can hear you? Can you speak to us so we can hear you? Your land is beautiful. Let's say help us. Whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Stop. I heard that. I literally just heard the drums, something right over here. Whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Stop. I heard that. I literally just heard the drums, something right over here. Like, I can hear that over there now, but this was over here. Mm -hmm. Hmm. going to go down to the house now there's some stuff set up in the house that you can touch and make it go off and we wanted to give you the opportunity right now to go down to the house while we're not there and see if you can touch the lights that are sitting on the stairs can you touch the lights on the count of three how about that three two one This is EVP session, Hinsdale House, Ryan, Miranda, Dave. We're on the first floor in the living room. Where the exorcism took place, right? Where the exorcism took place. We're here to talk to any of the spirits that may be here in the house. Beth used to say she would see a lady in white outside the window. That window is right behind me. We heard somebody used to live here who used to kill stagecoach drivers. What caused you to do that? Did you hear that? It was like weight on the floor right above me. Like a very tiny little footstep. We're grateful to all of you for allowing us into your house. We'd love it if you'd come out and talk to us. Do you want to move upstairs? Yeah. Definitely not getting anything down here. Was this here earlier? Yes, I put it there for a bang. Whoa. That was weird. Did you catch that, Miranda? Yeah. If it wasn't me, I'll do the same thing. Whoa. Thank you. That's a pretty cool little toy, isn't it? I will admit for the first time tonight, I have goosebumps. You know, as soon as I walked up here, I got a different vibe. 
Is that the little boy that is for going? I started knocking here. Really? Is that the little boy that is for going? Is that the little boy that is for going? I started knocking here. Really? I just heard one behind me. Whoa. In Mary's room. Are you walking around up here? Is that your favorite place to play right there at the top of the stairs? Can you step by that light one more time? We wanted to see what would happen if we had someone stay alone in the house here, simply because we feel like we're getting a lot of contamination and maybe there's too much energy in the room for someone who wants to come out and communicate. So Miranda and I are gonna just step outside. Dave's gonna stay up here in this room by himself and we're gonna see what happens. So best of luck, Dave, we'll see you in a few. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Again, just to introduce myself, my name is Dave, and me and my friends here came from West Virginia. to try and talk to you. Are you here? I'm sorry if we've been kind of loud or intrusive or anything like that, but we don't mean to be. Is that okay? Which one of these rooms up here was yours? Huh. Okay. I'm gonna head down. Okay, Ryan is downstairs in the basement and we are doing an SD session. Okay, um, it's sweeping, headphones going on. Okay, Ryan, can you hear me? Whoa. Hello? Okay. Are you here with us? Can you get close to that again? Okay, so if there are any new spirits in the house who are just joining us, my name is Dave, this is Miranda over here, and Ryan is down in the basement, your basement. In here? Yes, we're, we're in here with you, and we're going to be asking you questions, and Ryan has a device down there, he'll be able to hear your answers. Does that make sense? Are you upset that we're here? Tiffany said you would come out and speak with us. Can you do that? That's 
weird that he said nothing else. That is very strange. Can you do what you did before? Make this light go off? They said that there was an exorcist here in this room. Right over here in front of us. Is that true? Or better yet, here, I'll do this for you. I'll walk it in here. Right on the countertop. And now you have all kinds of space. Can you make it go off now? Is this house cursed? You're right. Huh. So we're right about the land being cursed? They say there's a ton of negative energy here on this land and in this house. So far, we haven't seen any of that. Well, it's been 20 minutes of nothing. Yeah. Should we go get him? We can. You want to hang it? Good timing. I just unplugged the spirit box. Hmm. I'm gonna cut on this. Okay. All right. So me and Miranda are outside. We're gonna walk the ground, see if we can get anything happen. Ryan's gonna be inside. He's gonna be doing a solo mission in there, and hopefully he can come up with something while we're out here. Is there someone in this house with me? There's, there's a box in my hand right here that if you come up to it, you should be able to communicate through it. Really? Yeah, really. I just heard your voice if that was you. What's your name? Activity by the pond? I don't know. We can walk over there. Might as well. Yes, hello. If you're here, can you speak with me? Is it true that there's a vortex or a portal right here? Hi. 
Who's the Who's the young lady that I just heard? Eve. Is there anybody from the land here? Any natives? We came out here to talk to you if you want to speak with us. Or if you don't want to speak with us, can you go in the house there and talk to Ryan? There was, a, there was a family that lived here that had four children. One of the children's names was Mary. Do you remember her? What about Beth? Do you remember Beth? This was her room. There's two more children. Can you say one of their names? Can you say one of the other children's names? Well, if there are any spirits out here, if you're native to the land, this is your land. We just came out here to talk to you. My name is Dave. And this is Miranda. And we would love it if you could make some sort of communication with us. Where is everybody? Why doesn't anyone want to come out and talk to us? Fools? Did you just call me a fool? Why do you think I'm a fool? There's just something about tonight. It doesn't feel like the house is activated. We've been investigating for hours now. We don't even have one, not even one experience, let alone evidence. I mean, we could have gotten stuff during abandonment. We could be getting EVPs on the digital voice recorder, but not even one personal experience. No feelings of being watched, no chills, no physical touch. It's just been very quiet, very comfortable, too. Very comfortable house. All right, well, it's the next morning. We got a little bit of sleep inside the Hinsdale house here, and we are packing up the car and getting ready to take off. That was kind of a quiet night, wasn't it? Well, it was pretty quiet, you know. We've had a pretty lucky season so far, and uh, unfortunately, this one was, it was, it was a little quiet. It was a little quiet, but you never know what we're gonna get on review. We don't know what we got on abandonment yet. So you all already know what we caught, but we at this point have no idea. So 
Miranda, did you have fun? I did. It was very quiet for a ghost hunt, but sometimes that's what happens. Hey. Started investigating. That's right. You can't all get extreme and terrifying activity every time you investigate somewhere. So, but we'll be back next week with another investigation, another episode. We're excited to bring you guys along for the ride. Make sure you subscribe, turn on bell notifications, and make sure you share this video with your friends and family. And we will see you next time. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.